Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today, I want to go over an example of rotation. A cylinder of mass m and radius r is released from rest at the top of an inclined plane, as shown. The cylinder rolls without slipping down the incline. The rotational inertia of the cylinder is one half m r squared. Part A. Derive an expression for the angular momentum of the cylinder about its center of mass when it has rolled a vertical distance h. Express your answer in terms of m, r, h, and the physical constants as appropriate. So angular momentum is L. L equals to I omega. We know I is one half m r squared. To find omega, we have to use conservation of energy. The point energy at this point, mgh, should be equal to energy at this point, which is uh, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy has two parts, rotational and a translational. So mgh equals 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared. We know i equals 1 half mr squared. What is v? Because from this equation, we're trying to find omega v equals r times omega because it is rolling without slipping. Substitute the known values. You can solve for omega. So from here, as you can see, m and m cancels. This becomes 1 half be plus 1 fourth. That's 3 fourths. So your omega should be square root of 4gh divided by 3r squared. Remember, this is omega squared, then you have to do square root. This is your L, I times omega. Simplify it. So this 4 and this 2 can cancel because 2 equals the square root of 4. This is square root of R squared, which is R. R and this 1R cancel. So what do you have? MR times square root of GH over 3. And that is your L. Part B. Is the angular momentum of the cylinder conserved as the cylinder rolls down a vertical distance h? Justify your answer. We know the momentum is only conserved when the net torque equals to zero. I mean, angular momentum when the net torque equals to zero for the linear momentum when the net force equals to zero. So is there net torque as the cylinder goes down? Because the cylinder cylinder is rolls without slipping, you must have frictional force. Otherwise, it's not going to roll. So that friction force is going to produce external torque. Therefore, the angular momentum is not going to be conserved. As you probably instinctively know, that cylinder is going down faster and faster. So omega is going to get bigger. So L has to be bigger. It's not conserved. And the reason for that is because there is a net torque by friction. Next part. A child's toy is composed of three narrow cylinders attached around a common axis through their centers, as shown. So here's three cylinders. The outer cylinder has a radius of 2r. inner cylinder has radius of r. And all the cylinders has the same mass, which is m. The question is, what is the total rotational inertia of the three cylinders added together? So we have to add it. The total cylinder is the outer cylinder, which you have two of them, plus the rotation inertia of the inner cylinder. We know cylinder is one half mr squared. So the difference is r. For the outer cylinder, you have two of them, one half m. The outer cylinder has two r. The radius is two r squared plus one inner cylinder. Simplify this, 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom cancels. You have the first term, you have 4 mr squared. Second term is 1 half mr squared. So that's 4 and a half, which is 9 halves mr squared. That is a total moment of inertia for this toy. Now the toy is placed on the narrow track that is inclined at angle theta above the horizontal. <coughs> Only the central cylinder is in contact with the track as shown. The toy, toy with rolls without slipping down the track. Let's see what do we know about this toy. We know the toy has total mass is 3m. The toy, are, are when it rolls on here, just on the inner cylinder, 
the rotational inertia is 9 over 2 mR squared. D1 on the dot, which represents a toy, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the toy. The dashed line is parallel to the narrow track. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting out and pointing away from the dot. So on this toy, there's normal force, there's gravity, and there's friction. So all the three forces, remember it's pointing away from the dot, and make sure you label it. D part 2. Derive an expression for the linear acceleration of the toy as it rolls down the track. Express your answer in terms of m, r, theta, and the physical constants as appropriate. To find a linear acceleration, we have to go back to Newton's second law. There's two parts. The first is the linear part of Newton's second law, f equals m a. This is net force. What's the net force? Is a parallel of m g, which is downward minus friction, which is upward, equals ma. Remember, the total mass is 3m, so don't forget your 3 here. The other part of Newton's second law is uh, rotational, is net torque equals I alpha. Net torque, what is the force producing torque out of all these three forces? Friction is the one producing torque. Torque equals the force times distance, that equals I times alpha. Alpha equals A over R. And here is I. So we can simplify this by canceling out all the R's. So F equals 9 over 2 MA. Substitute here 3 mg sine theta minus 9 over 2 MA equals to 3 MA. First of all, all the M can cancel. Next one, each term is multiple of 3, so we can cancel out 3. The second term becomes 3 halves. So here is negative 3 halves of A. This is A. You add together, then you move, move it back. So A equals 2 fifths G sine theta. That is your acceleration. Part 3. Determine the force of friction exerted on a toy as it rolls down the track. Express your answer in terms of MR theta and physical constants as appropriate. We already know friction is 9 over 2 MA, and we know what A is, simply uh, substitute it in for A. So it's 9 over 2 M times A, 2 and 2 cancels, F equals to 9 fifth Mg sine theta. Now the toy reaches the bottom of the, of the incline and rolls at constant speed V along horizontal section of the track. As shown, deriving expression for the total kinetic energy of the toy while it is rolling, express your answers in terms of MRV and physical constants as appropriate. So we know the total energy is uh, translation plus rotation. So translation is one half mv squared. Again, total m is 3m. And uh, rotation is one half i omega squared. Remember, i is 9 over 2 mr squared times omega equals v squared over r squared because we have to represent it in terms of v. Now you substitute for omega. Simplify this. You have 9 over 4 mv squared because r cancels. Now you simply add the two together. The first term becomes 3 halves mv squared. Second term is 9 fourth mv squared. You're factoring mv squared, so you add a fraction. I'm just going to do it because a lot of you forgot how to add a fraction. When you add a fraction, you have to have a common denominator. So this is 3 half. This is 9 fourth. So the denominator is not common. We have to make a common to make 3 half becomes 6 fourths by multiplying 2 on the top and the bottom. So you have 6 over 4 plus 9 over 4. Now you have common denominator. You can, when you add a fraction, you just add the top. 6 plus 9 is 15. That becomes 15 over 4 mv squared. And that's the answer. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time.